All right, everyone. So I would like to start today by showing you some of the misconceptions, the most common misconceptions that you guys had on your Dr. Frost Maths assignment covering factorization. So beginning with the medium one, so that's not the most difficult one, uh, we had two problems, one in which 58% of you got it wrong, oh sorry, got, got it right, and another problem which 59%, um, 58% as well, um, got it right. Those were the worst questions and I'd like to show you how to solve them now. So this is a simple quadratic, right? So we've got x squared x. Well, um, the first thing that we have to do in this problem is factorize. So we've got a common factor which is 2. So we can divide all terms by 2. So the first one would be x squared, the second one would be minus x, the third one would be minus 20. So if you look inside now, we've got x squared minus x minus 20. So we have to look for sum and product. So we're looking for sum negative 1 and product negative 19, um, negative 12. No, no, that's uh, 20, negative 20. Now, this is not that difficult. Look, the product is negative, so it's going to be a positive number times a negative number. Now, 20 is simply 4 times 5. Now, since it's negative, one of them will be negative, and since the sum is negative, the larger one is the negative one. So let's take a look. 4 times negative 5, that's negative 20, and 4 minus 5, that's negative 1. There you go. So we can rewrite this two in front, the two that we had before, and now all of this can be broken into x squared um, minus 4x, sorry, plus, plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. So we can say 4x minus 5x, that's negative x. So we can now, um, so here, x squared plus 4x, that's x times x plus 4. We have factorized x, which is our common factor. Now here, what's our common factor? Well, both numbers are negative, and well, I can divide 20 by 5, so 5. And then what am I multiplying? x. And then I've taken the negative signs out, so this will be positive. So what happens if I divide negative 20 by negative 5? I get positive 4. Alright, it's almost done. Now we've got x plus 4 and x plus 4. So this is um, a common factor of those two terms. So we can get x plus 4. Right, I could keep these this bracket here, but you see that it's uh, it's gonna vanish. Why? Well, x plus four. Now, x plus four multiplies x, and it also multiplies negative five. Now, now you can see why we don't need those brackets anymore. So you don't you don't have to to draw them. So you can just write two x plus four and x take away 5. Now remember that the order here doesn't matter, so you could have 2 times x minus 5, x plus 4. Now another problem that we had on our, on our factorization problem, the medium one, the medium difficulty one, was this problem. So um, if we analyze, well th now we don't have any common factors here. So now it's simply sum and product. So what we're gonna do, we will first factorize what's down here and then we'll try to get something that we can cancel out on top and below. So let's just solve that quadratic first. Let's just solve our denominator, okay? And then we can take a look at the numerator, so denominator down here. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 12. So if we multiply 3 and negative 12, we're going to have negative 36. That's our product, right? And we need to get a sum, which is negative 5. 
So let's think about the factors of 36. So I don't know, I could have 6 and 6, right? This is negative, so one of them will have to be negative. Um, but that doesn't work. We could have, well, 12 times 3, right? Now, 12 times 3, if we make the difference, would be 9. So that's not it. Um, what about 4, right? We could have 4 times 9, and that seemed to work. So for this to be negative, 9 would have to be the negative one. So 4 minus 9 is negative 5. And 4 times minus 9 is negative 36. So those are the ones, 4 and negative 9. So we can rewrite this quadratic here as... Um, so we're going to split this middle term all right, into 4 and negative 9. Since this is 3x squared, well, I'm going to get the 9 first. And then plus 4x minus 12. So you can see here, negative 9x plus 4x is still negative 5x. So I haven't changed anything. Now we're going to start factorizing those so we're looking for common terms so those first couple ones so we've got 3 obviously and also x so if I divide 3x squared by 3x I'll get x right how much do I have to multiply to get this x now what about this one I have to multiply by negative 3 so take a look 3x times negative 3 so negative 3 times 3 that's negative 9 and x now plus, so 4x minus 12, uh, we have to look for common factors. So 4, right? 12 is um, 3 times 4. Um, so 4 times x, we need the x here, and we need the 3. So 4 times take away 3 is take away 12. Now if you look here, again, uh, we've got x minus 3 on both of them. So x minus 3, and then 3x what we have left 3x plus 4 so this is what we have down in this fraction so this all of that is just to do this 3x over x minus 3 and 3x plus 4 now before we move forward I would like to show you some um, Let's take a look at this 3 minus x here, okay? And what would happen if I had a negative sign in front of that? What would that be equal to? So first, this 3 would be negative, and this x, which was negative, would become positive. Okay, so what I'm showing you here, I'm just going to rearrange that. So x minus 3 is the same thing as minus 3 minus x. All right, why am I showing you this? Well, because if you look, well, we haven't used this. Because if you take a look at your fraction, you have 3 minus x on top, and you have x minus 3. So we can use this relation here, x minus 3 equals negative 3 minus x. This is what we have been doing so far. I'm just showing you why. Because sometimes you guys just uh, memorize things and that's not the point. You should understand why we're doing that. So we can just flip the signs. Um, so here, 3 minus x, we could write all of that. Instead of changing the one on top, I'm going to change the one down below. So 3 minus x, I haven't changed. Now I'm going to change x minus 3 and I'm going to replace as minus 3 minus x. Brackets and then 3x plus 4. And then I can cross them out. This is 3x times 1, isn't it? So I can divide by 3 minus x on top and 3 minus x down below. And then what we have at the end, 1 on top, which was multiplying anything. And here, minus 3x minus 4. 
okay another way you could write this you could leave everything positive here and just put a negative sign here on one this is the same thing as minus one over three x plus four both those answers would mean exactly the same thing alright so this um, problem now looks a bit difficult but it's actually quite simple what you have to observe here is that you've got x minus 5 squared and also x minus 5 here and those are the only things you're summing up so you can actually find um, common factors before you start doing anything so if you expand let's first expand um, and show that this is basically x minus 5 right multiplied by itself despite the 4 that's x minus 5 times x minus 5 that's what the square means plus 3 times x minus 5 now if well I could in principle expand this couldn't I I would still have x minus 5 which is my common term so 4 if I multiply I would have 4x and I would have negative 20 right x minus 5 plus 3 x minus 5 now we could have done this in the beginning so if you don't feel like doing all those steps that's fine but I've shown you in a way that it's easier to season it so you can now collect x minus 5 from both of them and then what do you have here for x minus 20 and what do you have here plus 3 so x minus 5 which multiplies multiplies 4x minus 20 plus 3 minus 17 and that's the answer so let's for let's go for the next problem now and we have a fraction again and two quadratics so again what you have to do is try to factorize on top and below and then try to solve it try, try to simplify anything that you that you can so here x squared minus 6x well it's simple right that's x so x times x minus 6 I'm going a bit quick here because you can pause you can go back so if you don't understand anything you can go back you can drop me an email and I can try and explain better but I I won't take a lot of time because there's there's no point so if you have any doubts you can you can pause you can try it yourself right and you can try and check and understand what I've done now 2x squared minus 7x minus 30 um, this is a prime number this is a prime number so there, there won't be any any numbers here that we can simplify right there are no common factors between those three um, terms here that we're adding so what are we going to do here? Sum and product. So if I take a look here, 2 times negative 30, that would be negative 60. That's our product. And what about our sum? So for sum, we should have negative 7. So let's think about products of 60. Um, well, I don't know. For you to get 7, let's see, what about 12 and 5? 12 times 5, that's 60. Now, one of them has to be negative, so this one, because this is sum is negative 7, so the negative is larger than the positive, so if I sum those up, I would have negative 7. So negative 12 and 5, so we can split the middle term here so 2x squared now take a look what I've what I've done here I've put 2x squared and minus 30 which are the terms that we're not splitting now we have to decide which term is going to be the second one and which one is going to be the first one so if I actually look closely 12 and 2 they do share one common factor and 5 and 30 they do share a common factor right in this case that's 5 and here that's 2 if I try to do anything else 5 with 2 they wouldn't have any common factors and 12 with with 30 they would 
but in this case here they would have um, both would have common factors so that's my choice negative 12x plus 5x minus 30 if you sum those you would get negative 7x so you get back to the first problem now if we collect so common factors in the first couple ones what do we have here well 2x so 2x times x and 2x times negative 6 take a look 2x 2 times negative 6 that's negative 12 and then x plus now 5x and minus 30 what is the common factor between those two terms 5. So we've got 5 times x and 5 times negative 6. If you're unsure how to find those numbers, you, you can always divide. How much would be negative 30 divided by 5? That's negative 6. How much is 5x divided by 5? That's x. Now, you, you can see what's happening here, right? So you can see that all so I'm just going to put x minus 6 in front. I, I've just changed here. It doesn't make any any difference whatsoever. And well, down below here on the, on the denominator, I can collect x take away 6 from both of those terms. So x take away 6, I've got 2x. And x take away 6, I've got plus 5. Now, it's all products here, it's all products here, so I can cross things out. And then, our final answer would be x over 2x plus 5. And there we go. Alright, now getting to the hard questions. Um, the one which got the lowest score was this one. So we've got basically two different quadratic problems that we'll have to factorize individually and then we'll have to find um, some common factors to simplify them. So basically simplify fully. So let's, let's, look, let's look at each of those quadratics separately and let's factorize each one of them. So the, the one on top is this one, okay, and the one down below on the denominator is this one okay so numerator denominator so let's solve the our numerator do we have any common factors here no there's a prime number this four four they those two they do have but this one doesn't so if I try to solve this I would need some end products so my product is negative 12 and my sum is negative 4. So I'm looking for two numbers which uh, multiplied will give me negative 12 and summed up um, negative 4. So what about 2 and 6? If I multiply 2 and 6 I get 12. One of them will have to be negative for this to be negative. Since my sum is negative it means 6 is negative and larger. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12 and 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. So this can be rewritten as 3 and then we're gonna split this middle term into 2x and negative 6x. So since this is 3 and this other one is 4, I'm going to share 6x with that term because they do have 3 as a common factor. Now what I have left plus 2x and take away 4x squared. Alright, now I can factorize those couple, um, each of those couples. So here on the first one my common factor is 3 and 1 minus 2x. What about the second one here? Well, I've got 2x, so plus 2x, which multiplies, so here is 1, and this other one, well, negative 2x, 
because if I multiply 2x by negative 2x, I'll get this. Or if you divide negative 4x squared by 2x, what do you get? Negative 2x. Okay, and close. Let's close this. God. Close the bracket. Yeah. Now let's continue on the next line here. So now I can collect like terms. So this and this, they are the same thing. So 1 minus 2x times 3 plus 2x. This is what we have on top, our numerator. So now we have to work our denominator. So here we've got actually two problems, two factorization problems in one. So that's why this would be loads of marks in an exam. So again, if we look at those numbers, do we have any common factors? No. So we have to do sum and product. So here, um, product will be 6 and sum will be take away 7. So we have to look for numbers 6 and take away 7. Well, what about negative 6 and negative 1? So negative 6 and negative 1, if I do the product, that would be 6. If I sum them, it would be negative 7. So 6 and 1, well, 6 shares factors with either. So I can just choose any. So I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to put the 6 on the front, right? So minus 6x minus x plus 3. So we have split, we have split at the middle term, or we have split the middle term. Now 2x with 2x squared with negative 6x, so we would have 2x as our common factor. So 2x times x, and 2x times take away 3. Alright, now this next number is well plus 3 minus x I've just I've just rearranged but it's still the same thing plus 3 and minus x plus 3 minus x now notice that this is the same thing as minus x um, sorry um, minus x minus 3 right if I just change the sign here and change all the signs inside it's still the same thing look if you expand negative x plus 3 negative x plus 3 so it's it's the same thing but we're gonna use this because well we have x minus 3 here so we want this to be x minus 3 as well so if we continue here our denominator we would have 2x I'm just going to repeat what we have done x minus 3 minus x minus 3. Now, if we collect like terms, our like term would be x take away 3. Now, on the first term here, we're multiplying this by 2x. On the second one, we're multiplying by negative 1. There's a hidden one here. So it's negative 1. So this is our denominator. If now we get what we have found, this result and this result, and we put that into, back into our fraction, we would get 1 minus 2x times 3 plus 2x. I could switch the order here, 2x plus 3, doesn't make any difference. Um, if it makes better, if it helps your visualizing, just do it. 2x minus 1. Now, before this is done, the last thing that you have to do is observe. Now, notice, what can you, what can you notice when you compare this number and this number? So, 1 minus 2x and 2x minus 1. So, 1 is the negative of the other one right so I could I could rewrite well for example I could I could rewrite this as 2x minus 1 right but 
for me to get exactly the same thing, I would have to multiply this by minus 1. Right? Or I could do exactly the same thing here in the denominator, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep exactly the same on top. And I am going to change a few things down below. Now, if I flip this, 1 minus 2x, I would have to put a negative sign on front. So this would still be the same. However, I can flip the signs of this one as well. So if I flip the signs of both of those terms, then I'll still have the same thing because I would have negative 1 multiplying this and negative 1 multiplying this and then when I take those negative ones together it would be 1 so I can do this look what have I done I have swapped the order of those so changed all the signs and I also swapped the order of those ones changed all the signs since I've changed these ones and also these ones I'm keeping the same thing I haven't changed anything and now I can cross out like terms and what we get is 3 plus 2x or 2x plus 3 over 3 minus x. So the last example I'm going to show you uh, was question 3 on the hard list and what I'm going to do is actually show you because you could just expand all of that and then try and factorize and that would be a lot of work a lot of work so we don't have to do that and there's a much simpler and better way to do it um, and I'll show you so let's well so what we have here 2x minus 3 all of it squared minus 4 times 2x minus 3 minus 5 so what we can do here uh, we can substitute so let's assume that I've got some other variable called a okay this is not a, a 9 that's an a Okay, so a is 2x minus 3. So if a is 2x minus 3, how can we rewrite this equation using a? So we would have a squared, because it's 2x minus 3 squared, so now it's a squared, minus 4 times a minus 5. So now it's a much simpler problem. We're going to find a, and then we have to replace x again. If we want to express x in terms of a, we would have that x is a plus 3 divided by 2, right? So if we find any a, we could just go back to the original problem by applying this transformation. So if we solve this problem here, um, so this is 1, so sum and product, so product is take away 5, and sum is negative 4. So product take away 5 and sum negative 4. It's actually too simple, isn't it? Because um, 5, well, 5 is 5 times 1. Now since it's negative, one of them is negative. Now, since this is negative 4, the larger one is 5. So, negative 5 plus 1, that would be 4. So, this a squared minus 4a minus 5 is actually exactly... Um, so, we have split. Well, we don't need to split the middle term in this case, but it's exactly the same thing, isn't it? Plus a minus 5a minus 5 and what we're gonna get is here we can factorize a so that's a which multiplies a plus 1 and here minus 5 a plus 1 right we had the negative value 5 and then a is positive now and 1 here is positive now so we can also factorize a plus 1 so we have a plus 1 times a minus Five, right a minus 5 that's what's left so we have found our factorization in terms of a but now we have to apply our 
we have to find x. So if a is 2x minus 3, so actually we won't, we won't need this, will we? I don't think so. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this back into our equation. So what we're going to have is 2x minus 3. This was a, right? 2x minus 3. plus 1, which is this one here. And on the next one, a, so that's again 2x minus 3, minus 5. So, work out here at the numbers, so 2x minus 2, and 2x minus 8. So, in fact, we can still simplify this. So, we've got 2 as a common factor here. So, 2x take away 1. And here, we also have a 2. So, 2x take away 4. So, our final result would be 4x take away 1x take away 4. And there we go.